with the NVIDIA RTX 50 series of GPU about to launch, I wanted to compare generational performance gains that NVIDIA made with the RTX 40 series over the 30 series and the improvements that the RTX 50 series is making over the 40 series. Now Daniel Owen did a pretty good video going over the charts that NVIDIA has released looking at a few games not using DLSS 4 MFG, so apples to apples comparison, which is all we have as of right now, so it's more of a first look, but he concluded that the RTX 5090 was on average 33% faster than the 4090, and that metric shrinks down a bit as you travel down the stack. Now let's examine the gains the 4090 made over its predecessor in a list of games with different engines, rasterization, ray tracing, and even path tracing. I'll be using my RTX 3080 Ti, which is pretty much an RTX 3090, and this is a Strix model too with a 450 watt BIOS that I've overclocked. And on the other side will be my Asus TUF RTX 4090, also overclocked. So let's check it out and come up with an average. Now for the system specs, I'll link them down below, but we are using a Ryzen 9800X3D with 32 gigs of RAM, C30, 6000 megahertz. We're going to start off here with the rasterization example, and this is the very recently released Assetto Corsa Evo at 4K with DLSS quality, and we've set the graphical settings beyond the maximum graphical preset because there is some experimental settings in here that I've gone ahead and maxed out. As for the benchmark run itself, it's nothing crazy. We're just doing a practice run in Mount Panorama. And some of these graphical settings can be quite demanding, by the way, the experimental ones, which is probably why they labeled them that way. But we just did basically one lap and then recorded our averages and 1% lows. And the RTX 4090 was 60% faster on the average FPS over the 3080 Ti and 46% faster on the 1% lows, which is a really nice gain. I mean, the 5090 is supposed to be around 33% average. It will be interesting to see what the 5090 compares as far as the generational leap that Nvidia made over their previous generation. Now, I'm a realist and I always, always try to be fair. I never expected the 5090 to have a similar performance jump because the 4090 had a really big advantage as far as the node it was made. I mean, going from Samsung 8 to TSMC 4 was a huge jump, which was going to result in really nice performance gains, but the numbers are what they are, and that's what it is in this case. But let's move on. The next example will be Black Myth Wukong, and I've set the resolution to 1440p for this one at 100% resolution scale. Path tracing is disabled for now, and everything else is fully maxed out. Now, this is a pretty interesting example because it is an Unreal Engine 5 game that also uses the NVIDIA branch of UE5, but also has path tracing and Lumen. In this case, we're running software Lumen. And the run was just running across the forest, basically, and comparing averages and 1% lows. And in this case, the RTX 4090 was 63% faster on the average FPS and 51% faster on the 1% lows. That is a really good performance advantage, uh, generational jump, whatever you want to call it. It is really, really good. On top of that, the 4090 is also quite a bit more efficient as well, which is really nice. Now, why did I go with 1440p? Well, the reason was to give the 3080 Ti a bit more of a chance, and I wanted to not have to use DLSS if I didn't have to. But either way, this game is quite demanding, even without the path tracing. But what about the path tracing? Well, this one gets quite interesting, actually. Resolution will still be 1440p, but we've also set DLSS to 66% and we've set full ray tracing, so path tracing to very high. So all the graphical settings are fully maxed out. And to no surprise, the game is extremely demanding. But what kind of blew me away is just how much faster the RTX 4090 was here. For average FPS, the 4090 was 150 percent faster that's insane and for one percent lows it was 145 percent 
faster. That is pretty crazy. I did not expect to see such a massive jump. But again, this game was built using the NVIDIA branch of UE5 and probably takes advantage of shader execution reordering in ADA architecture. And NVIDIA made a lot of really nice ray tracing improvements with the ADA architecture. And speaking of which, they seem to have made some pretty good ray tracing improvements with the Blackwell architecture. Now that's something I would love to be able to check out on the RTX 5090, although I'm not really sure if I'll end up getting one. If it wasn't for the channel, the thought wouldn't even cross my mind because I think the 4090 holds up extremely well. Pretty sure it's going to be the second fastest GPU, even after the new ones launch. But who knows, maybe at some time in the future we can check it out again. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at Callisto Protocol, baby. A game with the most confusing graphical settings menu, I gotta tell you. But we're gonna start with ray tracing disabled here. We're running the game at native 4K, 100% resolution scale, all settings maxed out, except for the ray tracing. I wanted to add this game because I actually quite enjoyed playing through it, and it seems to run a lot better now than it did before, but it's also an example of an Unreal Engine 4 game that also has ray tracing. And in this example, the RTX 4090 blew the previous generation away. It was 100% faster on the average FPS and 70% faster on the 1% lows. And I do have to say that this game launched in a really bad state, especially when enabling ray tracing. We're going to look at that in just a second. But right now it actually runs much, much better. As you can see, the 3080 Ti can run it actually at native 4K. No problem. The game looks great. I do suggest checking it out if you like these type of games. It's not as bad as people made it out to be, at least in my opinion. But anyway, let's take a look at ray tracing. All right, so now we've left every setting the same as it was, native 4K, but turned on ray trace shadows high ray trace reflections and ray trace refractions and we ran the same exact route as before and with ray tracing enabled the rtx 4090 was 90 percent faster on the average fps and 75 percent faster on the one percent lows that is truly impressive almost twice as fast as the previous generation's high end <laughs> that is pretty good but yeah that is the Callisto Protocol and our example of Unreal Engine 4. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a timeless classic and what will probably be a game that we're going to benchmark for the rest of our lives. And that is, guys, drumroll, Cyberpunk 2077. So we're going to run three benchmarks of this game. We're going to start with 1440p, native resolution, no ray tracing or path tracing. Every other graphical setting has been maxed out. Psycho, high, as high as they go. So let's check out rasterization. And for the benchmark run, I just ran across the Phantom Liberty starting area there during the daytime and made my way all the way down to this like project area straight ahead. And the advantage wasn't massive, actually. The 4090 was 45% faster on the average FPS and 44% faster on the 1% lows. That's actually still really, really good. In my opinion, the way I think about it is I would like to get at least 30% is kind of like my minimum for an upgrade to be worthy. But the cost also factors into that, right? But anyway, yeah, rasterization, it's nothing mind-blowing compared to what we've seen. But let's take a look at ray tracing next. All right, our resolution is still 1440p, and the only thing that we've done now is we've maxed out the ray tracing. But not path tracing. We're going to take a look at that next. And as far as the run, it's still the same run that we did before, but this time with cycle ray tracing at native 1440p, the 4090 went up big time. It was actually 85% faster on average FPS, whereas previously it was only 44% faster. And on the 1% lows, it was 86% faster, which is a really, really nice improvement over the previous generation's high end. Very impressive. Now, what about path tracing, though? Well, let's take a look at path tracing next. So our resolution is still going to be the same, but we are going to use DLSS quality because it would have been way too demanding for the 3080 Ti. 
and we've enabled path tracing. Other than that, every other setting is on Psycho. And we did the same run. This time, the 4090 was still way ahead, but not as far ahead as it was with just ray tracing. So that was kind of interesting. It was 75% faster on the average FPS and 65% faster on the 1% lows. Now, it could be that with DLSS quality at 1440p, the resolution is so low that the 4090 maybe can't stretch its legs fully. Not entirely sure. And the reason why I say that is because with just ray tracing enabled, we were consuming around 400 something watts and now it's dropped down to 350. So that could also play a role. Speaking of which, it will be interesting to see how the 5090 reacts with the faster memory because ray tracing, path tracing especially can be quite memory intensive and maybe the 5090 has a bigger advantage with the faster memory. I'm not sure, but this is the stuff I think about. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the next game. Now for the next game, we're going to take a look at Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered at 4K with DLAA. So that's native resolution and we've maxed out all the graphical settings. So this was, uh, you know, the older game that was, it's more of like a remake, I guess you could call it, because they brought it up to par with Horizon Forbidden West. And the 4090 here was actually noticeably faster, 75% on the average FPS and 72% on the 1% lows. That is a really, really nice uh, generational leap uh, for NVIDIA with the RTX 4000 for sure. Now, interestingly enough, Horizon Forbidden West is one of the games that NVIDIA has on their chart comparing the RTX 5000 with 4000. And as far as the 5090 versus 4090 is concerned, I believe the 5090 is around 30 or 33% faster or something like that. So yeah, less than half the advantage uh, from previous generation. Interesting. Now here's another game that was on NVIDIA's charts for RTX 5000, A Plague Tale Requiem. And we're going to do two benchmark runs on this. We're going to start with native 4K, all the settings maxed out except for the ray trace shadows. Ray trace shadows can be quite demanding on this game. I think it looks great without it anyway, but we're going to test it because that's kind of the point of this video. But without the ray trace shadows enabled, maximum settings 4K native, the 4090 was 70% faster on average. Really, really nice. And then for 1% lows, it was 90% faster, which is a very, very impressive advantage, the likes of which we probably may not ever see because how much more can the nodes shrink, guys? Let's be realistic here. But yeah, big, big jump. I think the 4090 might end up being one of the greatest GPUs NVIDIA's ever made, as far as gaming is concerned, anyway. At least I think so. But yeah, let's take a look at the, uh, the ray trace shadows now. So for our ray tracing run, what I did was I set DLSS to quality at 4K and then enabled ray trace shadows. Everything else is maxed out. Like I said, ray trace shadows can be quite demanding here. So I felt I had to use DLSS just to give the 3080 Ti a little bit of a chance. And as you can see, it's still quite far from hitting 60 FPS. But the advantage of the 4090 here didn't change all that much. We had 74% for average FPS, so a little bit higher than previously, and then 78% for the 1% lows, which is a bit lower than previously, but still very, very good, very big advantage for the RTX 4090 in a Plague Tale Requiem. The next game I want to take a look at is Dragon Age The Veil Guard at 1440p with DLAA, and for graphical settings, we've maxed them out except for the ray tracing. We're going to check ray tracing next as well. But I think they updated the game and added even more demanding graphical settings. Fade touch, so we have that enabled here. And the 4090's advantage here is actually really, really good. For average, it was 62% ahead, faster than 3080 Ti. And for 1% lows, it was 65%. So now I know this game wasn't received all that well but it makes for an interesting benchmark and it's also a different engine as well uh, that you know i feel it can better inform us 
And yeah, without ray tracing, the 4090 has a pretty big advantage. And to be fair, the 3080 Ti is actually doing pretty well here uh, also. But what about ray tracing? Ray tracing can actually be very demanding on the CPU in this game. One of the most demanding games when it comes to ray tracing and CPU, from what I've seen. All right, so we've now enabled ray tracing. We're still running at 1440p with DLAA. Everything else is maxed out, and we've turned on ray trace reflections, ambient occlusion, and ultra ray tracing set to on. And with that same exact run that we had before, well, the numbers didn't actually change all that much as far as the advantage. The RTX 4090 was 73% faster on average versus the 65% we had earlier. And for 1% lows, it was 63% faster. So still very, very impressive. We basically see the 4090 be around 70-ish percent ahead, which is pretty much similar numbers that everyone else has come to. So hardly a surprise. But anyway, we have one more game to take a look at, and it's an NVIDIA staple and it's going to be used to showcase the mega geometry and a few other technologies that I'm actually very excited to take a look at. Alan Wake 2. So for Alan Wake 2, we've set the game to 1440p with DLAA. So we're not using any upscaling and we've maxed out all the graphical settings, everything that includes path tracing, ray reconstruction, and everything we can crank up, we have done so. And the 4090 has a massive advantage here too. Actually quite similar to Black Myth Wukong. Average, 95% faster. 1% low, 120% faster. So yeah, I mean, some of these games have been built to take advantage of the new ray tracing improvements NVIDIA made with the Ada Lovelace architecture. And I'm pretty sure that Alan Wake 2 will probably be a best case scenario showcase for the RTX 5000 launching very, very soon. And speaking of which, we have some new technologies that NVIDIA announced like Mega Geometry that will be implemented on Alan Wake 2 that will be very interesting to take a look at. Again, I'm a fan of ray tracing, so I do like seeing these technologies move forward. But yeah, guys, I mean, the RTX 4090 may be probably the best NVIDIA GPU when it comes to gaming. Anyway, the leaps that were made in performance, energy efficiency is really remarkable and truly impressive. As a matter of fact, if we tally up all the averages and 1% lows and come up with an average, right? We have an 80% faster on average FPS in the 14 benchmarks that we did and 76% for 1% lows. That is extremely impressive. Now, to be fair, I never expected the 5090 to have similar advantages just because the node is pretty much the same. The only way they can recently increase the performance is to make a bigger chip or consume more power, which the 5090 will be consuming more power, but it seems to have the biggest advantage in its AI capabilities, which is not really a feature that I'm crazy into, although I would like to get into it more. But I guess it makes sense why they're pushing DLSS for multi-frame generation so hard in the marketing, which speaking of which, I'm not the biggest fan of some of the ways they're doing it, but I'm more of an apples to apples guy, although it is an impressive feature that they should be showing off. I'm not against that at all. I would just probably do it a little bit different. But anyway, I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. I think the 5070 itself being $50 cheaper than the 4070, I think opens the doors for some pretty good builds that are fairly affordable. I think that might be something uh, worth exploring and showing people because it makes it more affordable and accessible. And you have some really nice, some of the highest end PC features that you can have in gaming. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I do appreciate you guys watching. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.